generated in Lachlan Murdoch's office uh, when we went to see him many years ago. America, that was the idea. How do we get into America? And I remember running into Rupert Murdoch over in New York to, when we were discussing this, and I put it to him, and his only words were, good luck. Yeah, we are blessed on Sports Day to talk to test captains, state of origin players, uh, NRL players, immortals who are all leaders in the game. But uh, tonight, we have the number one leader in the game. The chairman of the ARLC is joining us on Sports Day. Peter Volandis, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, gentlemen, or evening, I should say, but I'm in Japan, so it could be any time. <laughs> well, are we, is this exclusive, Pete? Are you over there to, um, to get the next possible NRL location for games? Well, I'm looking at a beautiful stadium here now, but I'm here for racing, actually, my other job. So uh, I'm a, a speaker at, at one of the Asian racing conferences, and it's being held in Japan. Yeah, nice. There wouldn't be much money in racing over there with that. Oh, oh my God. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well it's, it's one of the number one sports over here, and um, they own the TAB, the racing industry, and it, it generates you know billions of dollars. And uh, the Japanese horses are rated as some of the best in the world, and you can see why. They've just got such a great system. Mm, awesome. Now, uh, I've got to say, NRL Hits Vegas documentary, which um, which aired uh, last week. Uh, well done on that, first and foremost. It was a great insight. But we just heard at the top there, Pete, the, the comments from, from Lachlan Murdoch that um, that you said during the documentary. Were those comments that we heard, was that something to, to motivate you and, and fuel your fire to make it make it work? I don't, I don't think people realise how big the Murdochs are in America. The Fox network is massive. Uh, they, can elect, you know, they can have an influence on who the president is. Mm. They've got a mm. Fox studio or Fox network in every state. And Fox News is the biggest cable news uh, telecast in the US. So uh, if anyone knows how to get the American market, it's the Murdochs. And, and Lachlan is a, a brilliant operator. Uh, I think mm. he's highly underrated. And uh, when we met with him, I, I, we put the plan to him. He loved it. He thought we had an opportunity. Um, and we took that opportunity because uh, if we can get to the Fox network throughout America, that, that generates you know, up to 200 million possible viewers. And if they get behind it, um, we've got a really big chance. And it, it could generate you know, not tens of millions of revenue, but hundreds of millions of revenues in the next 10 to 20 years. Yeah, it, that documentary was fantastic. Dave, the... the the viewers a real insight into the game and the mechanisms that, that got us over to, to Vegas. I'm a huge fan of American sports, Pete. And, and one thing that they do incredibly well is they document their games and their players and you get to learn of those players' personalities. Now, the way that this documentary was done, it, it sort of it reminded me of like an NFL films type situation. Do you think we could see more of that type of documentary stuff for the NRL? Say the NRL set up an NRL films and, and sort of started to get into the personalities of our players and really connect them with our fans. Oh, absolutely. And you only have to look at the F1 and the success they've had through their mm. documentary. Uh, we're looking at one called The Playmaker where we follow someone like Reese Walsh or uh, around and, and and look at his, you know what he does in his spare time when, and how he... Uh, gets ready for the game, and then when the game comes, and, and he's got so much charisma. Like, he attracts different demographics, yep. Reese Walsh, not just the young ladies and the young guys, but he attracts them, you know, uh, everybody, because brilliant players always attract an audience because as soon as they get the ball, everyone sort of stands up to see what they're going to do. Um, and Reese is one of those guys, and we've got a, quite a few of them yep. at the moment. So if we can do a series just on playmakers and, and you know, take it to the national U.S. market before the next Vegas... I think it'll be very successful, and um, because we've got a lot of personalities in our game, and we want to we want to highlight those personalities. Yeah, absolutely. Now the game itself, uh, I'm loving the product that is NRL. Like, what what, how, what score do you give it out of ten at the moment? How's the game tracking overall in your eyes, Pete? Well, for me, you've got to look at what the fans do, and one of the things I've tried to do very very hard in in my tenure at the NRL is to look after the number one person, which is the fan. Without the fan, you don't have anything because they pay their money to subscribe to watch the game, they pay their money through the gate, so you pay the players and they pay the coaches because without that revenue you you don't have a game. So if you look at what the fans are doing at the moment we're doing well because it's record ratings. We've never had more people watching the NRL in its history. We're getting record attendances. We're getting sellouts at games. So if, if that's the indicators, we're doing um, exceptionally well. Look, you're going to always have 
um, arguments and debates and differences about referees and bunkers, etc. But that's part of the game. It's part of the tribalism. Everybody thinks that they're getting an unfair advantage or the other team's getting favouritism. Yeah. And that's that's the beauty of rugby league. We're all in tribes and um, we're biased to those tribes. And, you know, sometimes you... You think the referees have put the holes in the in the ozone layer, but <laughs> yes. they haven't. They, 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 they try their best. You know, that, that, those potholes in pitch, but they wasn't caused by the bunker. It was they, they were already there. Yeah, you're right. You are. I mean, criticising yeah. officials has been going on since 1908, Pete, as we know. And, of course, over the weekend, the biggest moment was the Stephen Crichton non-sin binning. And you and Andrew have both said you'll, you'll review the current system. Will that happen upon your return, or do you think it will happen at the end of the regular season or after the grand final? Look, we always conduct a consultation with all stakeholders straight after the grand final. It'll be no different this year. We, rather than doing it in individual lots, we might do it as a big group. Have a you know have a a group session where everyone's in the room. And uh, look, we've got a few ideas about the bunker and how we can improve it, and then the refereeing. Um, and we'll, we'll certainly take that to the clubs and the players and the coaches, etc. And look, Wayne Bennett's been very vocal and he's been of assistance to us in, in different ways to look at it and say, look, no one's got a monopoly of ideas. If we can get ideas from other people and uh, concepts from other people, we'll certainly look at them and we'll certainly implement them if it improves the game. Now, you've mentioned the word fans on a couple of occasions, so important, uh, the great stakeholders of the game, of course. When it comes to expansion, Pete, give us an insight into what a decision like that, um, what is the priority? If you had to put them, rate them in priority... Is it the potential revenue from broadcasting rights? Is it new fans to the game, or is it the threat by the by the AFL? I think it's all three. You, firstly, you have to do a business plan to ensure that what you're doing is not going to take you backwards uh, in revenue wise. So you'd certainly have to generate more revenue, and you have to get more fans. When we looked at the Dolphins, the first area we looked at. It was no getting good getting fans that are already following an existing team and then they migrate over to the to the Dolphins. You no, know, we didn't want Bronco fans going to the Dolphins or we didn't want St George fans going to the Dolphins. We wanted new fans. So when they did their pitch and submission, they showed how they could get two hundred thousand new fans. And we took that to the broadcasters and said, Look, this is giving you the availability to get an additional two hundred thousand subscribers. And, and they gave us additional revenue on that information and we were able to increase our broadcast fees. And sure enough, the, the Dolphins have brought new fans in and we've been getting higher ratings in the Queensland area, especially when they're performing well. And the derby between them and the Broncos has certainly attracted great interest and great rivalry and that's going to uh, stay. So when you're looking at the other markets, they've got to bring in new fans and the broadcasters have got to see the potential in additional revenue. And... Um, of course, you want to, the beauty of a 20-team competition, it makes the, the, the competition fairer because everyone can play themselves one, each other once and then um, you've got more time to be doing State of Origin and international games because I'm a big fan of the international game and I want to really see mm. the green and gold uh, come back into, into, into play because when I was a kid, that's all I wanted to do was play for the, you know, for the green and gold of Australia. I know the State of Origin is taking over now, but... We should take pride in that jumper, and, yeah. and Mal Meninga has done a great job in putting the pride back into the green and gold jumper. So we really want to promote international games, and I think there's a a real market there. You know, we we got thrashed by New Zealand the last time, so you know this year we it's going to be a real competition, and Australians should get right behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Pete, if if we go to 20 teams, is it, would it be a similar situation, or would you would you look into something like a uh, different divisions or conferences, something similar to like what they do what they do in the NFL, or would it just be twenty teams play each other twice and that's that's the season? Look, we'd be derelict if we didn't look at the conferences. Um, yep. and again, you know, some of the minds and some of the coaches have come to me very early in the piece and said we should be looking at having two conferences, mm. and so. Having 20 teams gives us that that option. I'm not yep. saying we're going to do it, but it gives us the option, mm. and it, it, you know that might be a better a better system. We don't know, and we'll look at it and we'll analyse it. We'll get the feedback. And as, as I said, there were some some pretty smart guys that have come to me very early in my tenure, saying, you know, you really got to look at having um, two conferences. Now, uh, how big is the plane going to be? Uh... Pete, that the that the NRL are going to buy. We're reading that Cameron George and Jeff Rebel at the Cowboys and the the Warriors they want the NRL to buy a private a, jet. a private jet to accommodate 
teams that may be going to Perth or Papua New Guinea. So uh, is that a is that an asset that the uh, the NRL would po- possibly look at? Look, we looked at this during COVID. Uh, we, we because we had to charter planes at the time to get the, because we couldn't use commercial planes. It did make a lot of sense to buy our own plane, and we thought about it at the time, but we didn't because we got so much else on. We didn't pursue it. But I think um, uh, what what Cameron and Jeff are saying is, is quite credible because with the amount of travel that we're going to do, we could easily it could be more cost effective to have our own plane, and it's also better for the health and welfare of the player. So it's certainly something we'll look at. And it, you know, if you've got a bigger plane, also you could do it in a in a promotion where you take your fans as well. You mm. know, some of the fans that go to these games in the state, it might be a more cost effective way for them to get there. Yep. Now we'll definitely look at it. I think it's a good idea, and and, and if it helps the the players, um, you know, because it is if you're flying a private jet, it, it is it is so much better than going commercial. I can tell you. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't know, Pete. Just a battler, me. But. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm, Sats and I are happy to be the hosties on on the jet over to Vegas. Yeah, we, we can we can help out. We'll serve the, the food. Goodness. We'll serve the drinks. No, we've got to get we've got to get you there for next year for sure. You've got to be there. I'll have to. We'll, we'll work out a scheme out and get you there. Well, hey, just just and while you're talking about that and, and going to Vegas again, like, what do you anticipate? Yeah, based on last year, forty odd thousand people there. The you know the amount of excitement, uh, excitement around it. What are you anticipating? Like forecasting for 2025, Pete? Well, we've already sold 20,000 tickets. And at this time last year, we weren't even a quarter of that. So that gives you an indication mm. of how uh, quickly the tickets are going. We've already sold two charters that we chartered on the aeroplanes. Uh, we've got 4,500 that are coming from England that have already booked and because we've got a Super League match. So I think we'll get I think we'll get sixty thousand at the at the ground. Our challenge is to get Americans. That's who we want there. Yep. Yep. Um, so we'll start promoting in America. You know, pretty well straight after the the grand final. We'll, get, we'll focus on Vegas. Um, I'd be disappointed if we didn't get a full house. Yeah. What 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 is uh, the method to promoting in in the U.S.? Just ads, billboards. I mean, are, are you going to schools? Are you going to universities to educate people on what the game is? What, what's the what's the uh, what's behind that? Look, where, where where the revenue for us is if we succeed in the U.S. is there's an app called Watch NRL, and if you're in America, if you want to watch NRL, you have to subscribe to that app. No different to Netflix or yep. uh, the Disney Channel or anyone else. You have to subscribe. If we can sell, and, and the app is 160 US dollars a year, so you've got a 300 million plus audience in America. We only have to sell, you know, uh, one million, and you, it's the more revenue than you, you'll ever believe. So, and that's what the whole aim is. We need to get the people over there watching it on television. So it's not so much getting them at the game, but watching it. And this next year, as I said, the Murdochs who are right behind it, Fox have given us access to all their network, the whole network, which has never, ever been done before. This will be the biggest um, viewership, possible viewership of rugby league in its history. So so we have to sell it to those networks. We'll promote through those networks. You know, we have to use social media. Um, Russell Crowe was absolutely brilliant last year in his yep. explanation of the game. That's one of the best videos I have ever seen. Yeah, it was great. Uh, he just did a superb job. Him and a young guy called Joe Marchant, who put it all together, um, we'll, we'll reuse that because it's it's a great explanation of the game, not only for the US and uh, it's, it's good it's good for getting people in, in Australia because anyone that doesn't know the rules or how the game works, that video is just magnificent. Mm. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. Uh, last question before we let you go, Peter. Um, grand final entertainment. How, how important, important is it? <laughs> how 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 important is it to to get that right, or do we see the game itself as as the entertainment? I've got a theory on this. But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on it. Look, I'm, I'm probably different to most people. I think the game is the entertainment. You yes. buy tickets to go to the grand final because you, you know, because it's such a great spectacle. But it's an event, and people look at it as an event, and you look at it as a whole. So you try to, to get other forms of entertainment. Look, we're going to have a surprise this year. I think it will be announced in the next couple of weeks, um, uh, which will be a, a big act. Um, but in saying that, I still believe that the game is what brings people to the ground, and the rest is 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 nice. But yeah. 
it's not really com- sort of compulsory. No, no, I, I will agree with that. The game is the entertainment. However, I think a great act could draw in different eyes. Ray gun. Different eyes. Ray in- dancing? <laughs> no, no. Not, let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Pete, uh, thank you very much. We know you're busy and you're over there for uh, for other reasons outside of rugby league. And uh, we really want to appreciate uh, we appreciate your time that you've um, taken to, to give us on Sports Day. So thank you very much. No, no, no problem, man. You've got one of the best producers in the world, mate. I've never seen a more determined young guy than that Cohen, so hold on to him. <laughs> great He's not stuff. going anywhere. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you, Pete. Uh, yeah, no, we, he, no, my pleasure. Thanks, fellas.